at Waterbox Live. It's Wednesday, the best day of the week. It is. Make sure you guys smash that like button. It helps us a lot. Also subscribe, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell because we are here every single week. And this week we are um, on week two of our Peninsula 15 build. We are talking about testing water cycling and adding our first batch of inverts. Yes, it's going to be a fun day. So let's get it started. <laughs> and we're back. All right. All right. So this is going to be a great episode, you guys. We got some really cool content coming to you. We are going to be giving some stuff away. I got a water box T-shirt as well as a water box towel. We're going to be giving away plus a what, Worldwide what? Corals gift card, right? Yes. So Worldwide Corals is actually um, sponsoring the inverts and stuff for this build. So they're also doing gift cards along with each of the shows. Yep. Um, and we actually have some of their cool shirts here that you can get on their website. Lots of different colors. Um, you know, check that out for sure. But lots of giveaways. Also, a giveaway going along with the build. Yes, yes. So, um, Keenan, I don't know if you can pull up the website yeah. or not. But so, guys, for this uh, four-part series, we're giving away a Peninsula Mini 15 Plus Edition. This is an amazing prize, and you can win this not only in the United States but Canada, UK, and Europe. So make sure you head over to WaterboxQuariums.com, fill out the little form, get more entries by. Uh, following us on Instagram, liking us on Facebook, subscribing on YouTube, and uh, you get a chance to win this beautiful tank we have over here. Yeah, I love the Peninsula Minis. Um, we're gonna have, we're having a lot of fun with this one. And we are doing something a little bit different than we have before, is focusing on pretty much all inverts. Not yeah. doing fish, you know, we're gonna have some corals, but mostly focusing on some cool shrimp and crabs yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, and last week was our first episode, and we actually set it up from basically how it comes to you, set it up through filling it with water. Uh, I did a special aquascape with some arch rock from Carib Sea, actually mortared in place to have a cool shape that's gonna mm -hmm. be really nice to see the inverts kind of moving around and running around. So if you didn't check that out, definitely check that out from last week. Mm -hmm. You can see, you know, step by step how to set up your Peninsula Mini. Jess is an aquascaping wizard. Is, That's I what they say. Yeah. Um, I kind of do it and it just turns out really nice. And this one, um, I think it's going to be really awesome. It's finally cleared up and it's ready. Looks a little bit cloudy in that pic, but um, we actually did use the Carib Sea Life Rock. So some cloudiness is expected with this because it does mm -hmm. have actual uh, dormant bacteria on it. So once you put it into the water, it does help to start uh, cycle the aquarium along with using live sand and we've also been adding bacteria mm -hmm. to get through the cycle process so so again if you guys want to win this peninsula mini 15 head over to waterboxaquariums.com make sure you like this stream again that helps us out a lot and if you aren't already subscribed to the channel you're missing out you are like what and you gotta hit that notification bell too so you get that notification right when we go live so um so speaking of cycling we should yeah. probably talk about that because that's what you have to have happen before you can add anything to your aquarium. Yep. Um, so that's what we've been working on this week since uh, last week's episode is we use the life rock, we use the live sand, we've been adding bacteria mm -hmm. and doing what um, is called like a fishless cycle or ghost feeding. Yeah. So uh, way back when, when this all got into this hobby is it used to be throw fish in they're gonna cycle the tank, yeah. take a couple weeks, most of them die, mm -hmm. then you've got these fish left over. It's the old school way. It's the old school way, and now with you know the live bacteria that are out there, the rock that has bacteria in it, live sand, uh, fishless cycling is really the way to go. Yep. So you're pretty much using the bacteria and feeding the tank as if there's a fish in there, and we have a graphic kind of just explaining like a quick, what is the cycle? Um, the nitrogen cycle is what they call it. Bring it back. And... <laughs> 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 Give us that image back. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys are new to the hobby, this is an important thing that I really think everybody should understand, right? Is the ammonia cycle, because when you get a tank started, it's the most important thing to get your tank through before you really start putting animals in. Yeah, if you don't go through the cycle, you're gonna add stuff and it's going to die, it's gonna stress, you're gonna spend a lot of money and kill things that mm -hmm. shouldn't be killed. So it's called the nitrogen cycle and it's gone again. Yeah, we're having a little bit of an issue. Okay, here. we're not going to worry about that. We'll yeah. come back to that graphic. Google. The <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Google. Technical difficulties. So basically, it's waste product um, from a fish or just putting fish food yeah. into a tank. 
comes and breaks down into the original form is ammonia. It's yeah. the most toxic. Then that gets broken down by a type of bacteria into nitrite. There you go. Okay, waste from a fish turns into ammonia or any food. There's a sort of strain of bacteria that breaks it down to nitrite. Less toxic than ammonia, but then there's also a bacteria that takes that down to nitrate, which is your least toxic of the levels. And that's what you do, water changes and protein skimmers and stuff to reduce the amount. So during the cycle, you have to build all the bacteria strains that take it from waste product all the way through mm -hmm. ammonia to nitrate quickly. Yep. And basically it's like an instant continuous process. If any of those parts are not built up enough, you're gonna see, okay, my ammonia's high. You don't have enough bacteria to break down ammonia or nitrite. Any of those at a higher level, ammonia nitrite, can definitely kill your animals. So you want those all to be zero before you go ahead and start putting anything in your tank. And then that one here. So like a simple one is the API master kit. It's a great one for whenever you just set up your tank. It's got your pH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, super easy to use, drops. Um, and you want their pH is gonna range usually around eight to 8.2. That's your average for salt water. Your ammonia, always want it at zero. If it's not at zero, you need to add more bacteria, let it cycle longer. Do not add more livestock into it. Nitrite, same thing, zero. Do not add if it's above zero. And nitrate is, um, you know, the higher it is, the more deadly it is. So you really want to keep mm -hmm. that in the lower range, 20 or less, especially for inverts um, and coral, usually 10 or less. Yep. So if you have ammonia and nitrite, do not proceed to the next step. Yep. Stop, do not move further until those are zero. So because you will kill stuff or stress it out and it's just going to make your cycle take even longer. Again, I highly suggest you guys go hop on the internet, hop on Google and search that uh, cycle. There's a ton of resources on it. Yeah. You can dive in, make sure you understand it before you before you start your first aquarium, really. Yes, and a lot of times you may not be ready one weekend to <clears throat> right. set up an aquarium. So do not worry. We here, I mean, I monitor very closely the whole week after set it up. Right. We are speeding up the process in as much ways as we can because we do want to do this in a reasonable amount of time. Right. You know, do not be afraid to take longer. This is the, the faster version of things is the way we do it. Um, so just do not jump ahead if those levels are not zero. Yeah, take your time, especially if you're just getting into this and you've never really done, you know, managed the cycling part of the aquarium. Slower is I better. I always say nothing good happens fast in a saltwater aquarium. All these things yep. take time, so by all means, take your time with it. Absolutely. Do we have any questions or are we uh, gonna move on to adding some stuff yeah, in there? Some okay. I want to thank you guys real quick. We were just surpassed, I think, 18,000 subscribers. This hey! Week, so that's pretty cool. Right on our way to 20,000. That is awesome. Yeah. I remember when it was five, and then we hit 10, and we were excited. Now yeah. we're going for the 20,000. <laughs> that's awesome. Appreciate everyone who actually watches in live. If you guys every don't week. know, we've we've we went we used to stream live to Facebook and YouTube, so we've. We've tried to transition all of our viewers over to YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we're live exclusively on YouTube <laughs> every week. Um, so if you know anybody that's watching on Facebook, tell them to jump on over. Come find us. Yeah. Box 28 says, what bacteria did you add? Um, we've used we used kind of a different couple of different varieties. Um, like Dr. Tim's one and only and like Fritz Servo Start are mm -hmm. like live like refrigerated bottled bacteria, which are really good. Um, I've also had great success with like Microbacter 7, you yeah. know, stability. All those in their own right have um, definitely helped with the cycle. But I think one of the main things is that live sand and that Caribbean Sea Life Rock really does help stabilize everything pretty quickly. Yep. Because you're adding a lot of it on the surface areas and kind of jump starting that. But most of those out there, but if it is like a refrigerated form of bacteria, it's usually going to be um, a lot stronger. Yep. And more efficient because it is live, live bacteria. And Mermaid's Reef says Dr. Tim's fishless cycle guide is a helpful tool. Yeah, so Tim's one and only is a good one that people, a lot yeah. of people use. I don't know if you just answered this one, but. Um, why not use an ammonia source like Dr. Tim's? Well, if you use an ammonia source like that, I like a lot of times I think your cycle actually is a lot longer mm -hmm. and you cycle it a lot harder. Um, then you actually have to be. A lot of times you know, people actually use straight ammonia, ammonia chloride. Um, and I don't think that's generally always necessary. I think if you're adding some fish food um, every day or two, as if there was livestock in there and adding bacteria is usually pretty good, but you of course can definitely use an ammonia source. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Pascal says, what happens if you take off all the bio balls from the back of the tank in one day? which I don't think we used in here, did we? We did not. Um, 
So yeah, it's going to depend if it's a new setup tank like this. It generally wouldn't really matter too much because you're still in your beginning cycle stable time. If the tank's been up and running for a while and you don't have enough biological in the aquarium with sand and rock and, and sponges and stuff, you may actually uh, spike your levels and it could be very dangerous. So if you do have bio balls that have been there for a while, just do it slowly. Take a handful out once a week. You know, it's better to be mm -hmm. safe than just rush it too much. Mary Lynn, I just set up my Peninsula 15 and I love it. My pump is a bit loud. Any suggestions? Um, sometimes it's just if it's rattling against the sides, if the tube needs to be cut, definitely open it up, check the impeller, nothing's loose. And um, one of our favorite pumps to use for these is going to be a CJ. Because yeah. they're super quiet, long, long warranty. Just want a very nice high-end pump to upgrade yeah, if to. You wanna, if you want to upgrade to something that's a bit more expensive, like she said, the CJ, they have a five-year warranty on them. It's a great pump. Um, we use a bit more economical pump. Um, so it's, it's kind of up to you. Yeah, it's a stock pump. It comes with it. It's mm -hmm. good. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be as quiet usually as something like a CJ. Right. Um, which is known for being, like, one of the best quiet pumps on the market. Yeah. So... All right. All righty. So we're going to jump into it. And remember, guys, we're giving away one of our water box uh, towels here at the end of the stream. So stick around, ask us questions, engage with us. I'm also giving away a water box uh, next level T-shirt. These things are super comfortable, awesome shirts, whatever size you want. We'll send it to you. So ask us what you want to ask us, engage with us. Make sure you like the stream, subscribe, hit the notifications and grab a drink. Grab a drink. All right, so we have, why does it look so cloudy from the side? Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, so we have- Don't look like that to me. It doesn't, it's actually really, really clear. Yeah. All right, well, it looks great. Um, <laughs> so we've been acclimating our um, inverts in here and roughly about 40, 45 minutes, do a drip acclimation because you do want to make sure that they are um, in the same water temperature, parameters, that kind of stuff. So need this camera on. Oh, does he not have this one? No. You can switch the mic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. I was going to yell at him, but I didn't. <laughs> so in return here, they've been acclimating. They're ready to go in. And um, and if you want to take a peek in there now that it's now on. Invert. Right. Yay. They don't look nearly as excited in a bucket, but, you know, <laughs> they got to have their time. You always want to make sure for pH levels and temperature, salt, you do take time to acclimate fish corals and inverts here. So I'm going to, one of the things we did get, I'm gonna put this one in first, actually, I'm just gonna use my hand, is we got a maxi mini anemone. For the pure thing of getting a little anemone crab, which are very, very cool. So I'm gonna hope that he is going to host onto this little maxi mini anemone. Now these are actual enemies, so they're gonna move around themselves, but I'm just kind of putting them in place where I hope that he will settle his foot. But it is up to him. These don't get as big. Um, I've seen like five, six inches around. They're really kind of cool looking. They have a lot of color once they open up and on the inside. They don't get long, long tentacles, but you'll see a lot of times like an enemy crab, sexy shrimp, that kind of stuff actually will host on these. And then I'm gonna put the, do you need a bucket in the way or are you good? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Lizzie um, says, I like this stream. We like you, Lizzie. Thank you for joining us. So this is our little anemone crab here. Let me put him here. These things are so cool. He's mad. He lost his little claw. Ah, he's coming for me now. I'm trying to put him onto this. Gently. While you're doing that, Jess, Jose says, will the Reef LX series have upgraded shipping where they should set up inside the house? Unfortunately, Jose, those tanks mm -hmm. are far too heavy. Right. Um, they, the shipping service that we use, they can only send two people in. That means the product, each individual item has to be less than 300 pounds. And unfortunately, that tank is not. Why is it so loud? I look at it. Um, yeah, so... He hopefully, if I put him right there, once he settles in, will actually kind of stay with his little maxi mini anemone. So that's the plan. They don't always listen to that. So he's going to generally do what he wants. And that's fine. You're not the boss of him, John. You're not the boss of <laughs> me. Um, and then for hermit crabs, because you always need hermit crabs, some kind of cleanup crew, eat fish, food, waste, that kind of stuff, is we actually got some scarlet hermits. So I'm going to put them here so you open. And these guys are great cleaners. They'll eat algae, fish food, fish waste. 
but they're super pretty. They are super Adds bright. Adds a lot light. of splash of color. These three will have plenty, you they'll know. They'll start popping out too pretty quick. Yeah, so you usually have your standard hermit crabs, but these guys are gonna be a nice bright option. They have like yellow in their eyes. So those are my favorites. They're, they're very useful. There you go. Look at them. <laughs> um, as well as like really, really nice pop of colors. But in a smaller tank like this, you can really appreciate little crabs and stuff. KC Reese says, will you be guys adding any soft corals? We will be adding some corals in here starting next week, that week. And then, of course, they don't have to be, I mean, you're not really going to find much in the way of a fancy um, snail. But these are trochus, uh, often referred to as red banded trochus because they do have the red marks on them. These are very efficient algae cleaners. They upright themselves if they fall. They tend to be less likely to be attacked by like crabs and stuff. You will spend a little bit more on these than like a standard little astria or whatever type of crab or a snail, but they're well worth it in how much they clean and also just the fact that they don't flip themselves and not be able to get up and then they die. So they're just, you know, they're nothing too fancy about snails, but you do have to have them. <laughs> <laughs> and then since they are very hardy, um, compared to a lot of inverts, we decided to go ahead for our first round and put in some cleaner shrimp. Yeah, one of my favorites. I love those guys. Look at him go. And these guys aren't shy, so he's going to be right out. And that's kind of the reason why I did the double like arches and openings is because these guys love to hang on mm -hmm. those underhangs and around it. So you're going to be able to see them. They're going to fill in really nicely. Uh, we plan to get some more shrimp in here as well. But he's happy as can be already. Just like, oh, nice overhang. I'm going to mm -hmm. be right here. And we have one more of those guys. Cleaner shrimp are cool. They almost have like a personality. I don't know. They like dance around the aquarium and they're all... They are. They are very personable. They're not shy. They don't tend to hide. And one of my favorite things is once they get used to the aquarium and your hands, mm -hmm. a lot of times when you put your hand in, there we go, number two, they'll, they'll actually come up and like, yeah, clean your nails and <laughs> all that stuff. Um, and you'll just like have cleaner shrimp running all over you whenever you have your hand in the tank. So he's going to go run along. He's itching himself. <laughs> <laughs> so with these huge, long, like, antennas, like, they're going to fill up a lot of nice space, really nice and bright, very uh, good personality on these guys. So that is all we're going to add for week one because we don't want to overdo it. But it's going to add some nice movement in here. Hopefully that anemone crab starts to host the Maxi Mini. we got our shrimp running around. And then next week is going to be um, some soft corals, Possibly, you know, a few more shrimp or something, depending on what we come across I'm and what worldwide these, these gets a hold of close-up camera shots that Keenan was getting. Yep. Oh. <laughs> I know. They look really, they look really, really good. Um, so it's just it's coming along. Week yeah. one, got a few things. There's life and movement in it. And I think it'll be cool with, you know, like a nano invert system. Very, very neat to be able to actually, like, appreciate and see the little crabs and stuff running around. Like, you kind of lose them sometimes in big right, tanks. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's going to be really cool. You're going to be really able to, like, hone in on the inverts that are in there, opposed to if you have a ton of coral, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really what you're focused on. Yeah, we are going to add some coral, but it's not going to be too much. It's kind of just, like, some accent pieces here and there. Um, we really want it to be unique and just focus mm -hmm. on different crabs, snails, and shrimp for this one. So... Still have a couple more weeks of putting stuff in it. Yeah, so again, you guys, I forgot. We're giving away a towel, we're giving away a shirt, but we're also giving away a Worldwide Corals gift card here at the end of the stream, so stick around for that. Oh, you know what I forgot? I, I always forget everything. Oh, knowledges, oh my goodness. Jess is over here dropping knowledges. <laughs> we have now introduced nope. into our store a Saltwater Master Test Kit. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, we introduced uh, our our knowledges T-shirts. We've been yes. talking about this for a long we time. Have, and we have, they're actually we have real our, now. We have our silly saying that you know we're Jess is dropping knowledges here on the live stream. So if you want to get your knowledges, whether it's saltwater, freshwater, or our blue and white, you know, dropping knowledges, yeah, head over to our store. 
They're available in the U.S. right now. They'll be coming to Europe, U.K., Canada very soon. Yep, so they're in the area swag on the yep. um, website. Check those out. So we're excited. We've talked about it for forever to finally have knowledge of shirts. Um, <laughs> I'm sure with us, we'll have more designs and things coming along with it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, finally, we have a shirt to go with the same. Yes. I didn't have my notes today, so I forgot. We're a mess. We're just a we're mess. We're a mess. Straight it's up a mess. mess. What is next? Uh, I don't know, things. Um, <laughs> Keenan, you got some more questions? I saw a lot of really great questions in. I didn't touch on hardly any I mean, of them. I've been over there, so I'm trying to get to them right here. I have one right now right off the bat. I can give you while I look for some other ones. There you go. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. There you go. Hamid says, are conks the best sand cleaner that is not a fish? They're definitely not a fish. <laughs> That's the one thing that I know. <laughs> That was good. I can't take anything. That seriously. was analogous. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, conks are really good sand cleaners, and um, I do say that they're best to mix with other types of sand snails. Mm -hmm. I also like Nasarius. So conks and Nasarius are your best bet um, for like bigger sand cleaners if you get the tongue in Nasarius, and then also Sarah the snails. Yep. Are really good because uh, they'll go in sand. They'll also do rock and glass, so they kind of go everywhere. Whereas a conk and Nasarius just stay in the sand bed. One of my favorite reasons that I like Nasarius snails is they're called zombie snails. And they're in the sand, you don't know anything, and then you put some food in there and they just come out with their <laughs> little tubes and just come out like like zombies like out of the sand. It's a lot of fun. It is really, it's really cool. Fun. You drop so. the food in, they're like, it's like. And they just like burger, don't even know they're <laughs> and they come for their food. So yeah. get, get some zombie, zombie snails, snails. they're fun. <laughs> I think this is a joke. Uh-oh. 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 We're, oh, we're, we're getting trolled. <laughs> Keenan's letting him do it. Are sexy shrimp good on a cracker? Like a... Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like shrimp cocktail, I guess. Yeah, it'd be, a, it'd be an hors d'oeuvre, and they're roughly that big. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth so, it. you got to get a golf and shrimp. They're somewhere like 20 to 30 bucks a piece. So if you have that disposable money and you don't care about innocent poor shrimp, then go for it. <laughs> But no, don't do it. <laughs> That's what Keenan picks on here. <laughs> Amir says, any experience with blinnies and gobies in the same system? I currently have a Hector goby in the tank, about the same size as the Peninsula 15. Can I add a tail spot, Benny? Blah. Yeah. <laughs> I just wonder if you're going to have something funny to add. No? no. Good. Okay. <laughs> that was um. just me fumble fumbling the words. And I up. Those should be fine together because one's a goby, one's a blenny. They look very different from each other and they have kind of different areas that they stay in. Hector gobies are really cool because they stand and kind of hover around the base of the rock a lot of times, sifting a little bit of sand, picking at the rock, whereas tail spot blennies tend to perch and kind of swim around the tank. They can, I'd say tail spot blenny as he gets bigger might become a little territorial, but I think you'd probably be okay um, overall with those two in the tank. So. Can't guarantee it, but it should be. Okay. He's busy at work over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to scroll back. I saw some good ones, but I'm having trouble because there's so many people in here and there's so yeah. many comments. And... Oh, Josh Orr says, what are y'all's favorite inverts? Nope, I totally want it. I saw one, a good one. What? All right. <laughs> no, on here, I saw a good one. I was like, oh, that's a good question. How but many anyway. fish can you have in a mini 25? That's too variable of a question. It is. Um, if they're all nano fish, you could probably have four or five, maybe six, depending on how small they are. I mean, some little tiny fish for nanos are like half an inch, three quarters. If you want a clownfish and an anemone and like a blunny or a goby, you know, you're going to max out pretty quickly. Dwarf angel, something like that. So it really depends on the type of fish, what their max size is, and also how much are you feeding. So. That's it for questions right now. All right. There's one that I saw. Okay. It says, I lost it now. Oh, Josh Orr says, what are y'all's favorite inverts? Mm. Mm. That's a great question. Yeah, I'll wait for him to answer. Um, I'll go with mine then. So I would have to say, invert-wise, I would have to go with, even though you can't really have them in like a peaceful type of tank, I think like a decorator arrow crab is totally cool. Oh. Like they have these Creepy. long legs, they look like daddy long legs, Creepy. but the decorator ones take algae 
and corals <laughs> and stick it to himself. And there's like this walking That's a little bit cooler, thing. but the regular ones, they creep me out. It's like I know. I don't like spiders, but I think spider. they're so cool. <clears throat> So the decorator one has he put zoo he'll put zoos on them pieces of like I wish we had a picture that we could pull up. You guys get a chance to Google it. Yeah, decorator they're, arrow crab. Yeah, check it out. Very cool. But yeah. They're a little aggressive. I'm uh -oh. struggling with this one, but I'm I'm thinking either like a fire shrimp. It's got to be a shrimp, either a cleaner or a fire. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Simple but good. Out there, this question. Um, long trend is asking, do you recommend feeding with fish with garlic? Only if you're gonna have a salad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. We got, I'm he's sorry. got all the jokes today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have these days where I just can't take anything seriously. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. The knowledge is answer is. Um, <laughs> take yes. it over, shit. <laughs> all right, yes. Garlic is really good to put in your fish food. Um, don't go take garlic from your kitchen and do it. There is garlic oil that's concentrated by fish makers that is, um, make sure you're not using any processed or any preservatives that are bad for fish. Garlic is an actual immune booster. It fights off parasites and disease and also boosts their appetite. So yes, feed garlic. There you <laughs> go. Not a salad. <laughs> Don't listen to me. I think he's dying. <laughs> <laughs> I one more question. Hamid says, I'm making a fish only 300 gallon with anemones. Any thoughts like fish and types of anemones? Um, well, that's a big tank. I mean, you can really, in that size tank, you could technically mix types of anemones. You can't do that too well in smaller systems. Um, I would say with a 300 gallon, one of your benefits is that you can actually fit carpet anemones. And I think they don't get enough attention because they get huge. But they have green carpet anemones, red, you get blues, um, a lot of really nice ones. And like, I used to have green carpet anemone in a 210 gallon tank, and this thing was like, it was like two foot, yeah. like plus around. It was huge. It was beautiful in Tony Grand Tank. Um, and then fish, you just have to make sure nothing too small or things that might actually bite an enemy. Keenan, I think we got to fix the R on the logo. I just meant that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to comment back to that guy. <laughs> Someone doesn't like that the R is on this screen. No, so no, he's talking about the one on the bottom. Oh, uh, down here. Uh, oh, okay. He, All right, he's got ADD, he says. <laughs> Or it OCD. is an odd gap. <laughs> I will fix that for you, Mr. I love reading the comments from back here, too. You guys actually, we are literally have them right in front of us, so it's, it's yeah. pretty funny. Don't mind us when we're staring at them, like, what? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, what are we doing? Yeah. All right, you want to give away the towel? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, do we have a drum roll yet? Or the t shirt. Are we going to have a drum roll? We need sound a soundboard. Someday. Can't you pull, like, one off YouTube and like what? <laughs> no. That sounds um, like a, like a car. <clears throat> if you guys don't know, we have these online for sale also. They're in, I think, a three pack for like mm -hmm. 10 bucks. Yep, something like 10 that. 10 bucks, killer deal. They're very you need nice. to have lots of towels around your aquarium. These are handy. And they're microfiber, so it cleans the glass nice of all your streaks. Yeah, and actually, you know, I'm gonna, whoever wins this, I'm giving them a three pack, not just one. Yeah, so. they come in three. <clears throat> all right. Are we, we self drum rolling it? Ready? Almost, because it's almost ready. Not yet. No. Nope. Ready to go. Okay. Woo! Winner is... Steve Connolly. Congratulations. Water buff towels. I can read this week. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. Email support at waterboxaquariums.com, and they'll get your information and get those towels out to you. So, all right, towels are down. There's still a shirt. Gift card. Shirt. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, let's do the shirt. We'll save the gift card for last. All right. Waterbox, next level, tri blend t shirt. These things are awesome. So comfy. Yeah. Love those shirts. Let's go. Ready? <laughs> Travis Andrews, congratulations. Congratulations, Travis. Got yourself a free t shirt from Waterbox. What's up? I know. Believe me, it's going to be your favorite shirt. It yeah. is. Everyone loves them. Yep. These are just as soft, I think. I don't know. I think ours is way softer, though. Yeah. You know? The tri blend <laughs> is the tri blend is super super soft. Um, you have better. you have a favoritism for our shirts anyway. Side side conversation. <laughs> Rich has lost it this evening. Here we're gonna go ahead and send together. him off. Yeah, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>
All right, you ready for the gift card, Keenan? All, right. All right, guys. Twenty-five dollar gift gift card to WorldwideCorals.com. You can pick up their swag. Oh yeah. You can put it towards corals or fish or inverts. Um, so let's do it. Uh, what are these? <laughs> NC474, congratulations on the Worldwide Corals gift card. So reach out to support at waterboxquariums.com. They will verify you and they will get your gift card or your towel or your shirt out to you. I mean, okay, so not only are you to watch a wonderful show, get yeah. the knowledges, you yeah. win stuff like every time. Yeah, we're giving away stuff every week. Plus, we're giving away an aquarium system with a light. Um, don't forget to get some knowledge shirts. I want to see pictures of yes. people in their knowledge shirt because we're going to start revolutions. It's going yeah, to be like, yeah, it's going yeah. to be everywhere. We're um, dropping knowledge every week. Well, at least Jess is. I'm over here just screwing around. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we we appreciate true. you guys so much coming to see us here every week. Remember, like the stream. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell because we're here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. We got some big stuff coming this year. Yep, and we are back here next week at 6 um, on Wednesday to add some corals and maybe some more inverts. So thank you guys. See ya. Thank you all for watching. Remember, we're live on Facebook and YouTube, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit those notifications. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us next week. Thanks for watching.